Patch 12.1 is bringing a lot of balance changes to mix up the meta after Kai'Sa dominated the entire Christmas patch. In this video, I'll run through the patch, then tell you how these changes will affect the meta, and then finish off by giving a prediction tier list so you know what to play tomorrow. Starting off with system changes, they are adjusting some of the augment hearts. This is to balance the traits and to make the champions you get more useful in the early game. For example, now you get a Quinn instead of Warwick and Challenger Heart, and you get a Blitzcrank instead of Echo with Scrap Heart. This is great to see as it makes the hearts more attractive to pick up at stage 1-4. Moving on to traits. Chemtech gets nerfed and buffed depending on the level. 3 Chemtech gets a nerf overall, 5 Chemtech should be about power neutral, 7 and 9 Chemtech gets buffed. This is all great to see as 3 Chemtech felt very strong throughout the entire game, so it definitely deserved a nerf. 7 and 9 Chemtech are rarely worth it unless you get a Chemtech Soul, so it's great to see these as more viable options late game. Imperial gets a small buff at 3, but a giant buff at 5. They're also giving every single Imperial unit a small buff later on, so it's looking a little scary, but it's not that big of a buff at 3, and you need a spatula to get the 5 Imperial in. Now, Samira reroll might become more viable, and if you get an Imperial spatula, she will be doing an insane amount of damage at 5 Imperials. Innovator 5 gets a buff. This is nice to see as Innovator fell off really hard after the nerfs last patch. Socialite 2 gets a nerf. This is nice to see as it was dominating on the last patch. And Syndicate 7 also gets a buff. Although it looks like a lot, it's only about plus 10 armor and MR and about 3% more lifesteal. So it's not a giant amount, but it does help out Syndicate Shaco in the late game. Yordle gets a nerf as an economy trait, but it gets a huge buff to the reroll 6 Yordles comp. Now you will hit the 3 star 1 cost much quicker, which lets you push levels earlier and get in the other units faster as well. 6 Yordles, the synergy as well also gets a buff. So now Zix, Tristana and Lulu needs one less auto attack to cast, and Poppy and Vex will cast a little faster as well. The Elderwood or Metamorphosis version of Mutants gets a small buff. Now you get a little more damage with each stack. Moving on to champions and 1 costs. Caitlyn gets nerfed at 3 star. This will only affect Kogma reroll, but with two snipers, she should still one-shot most units in the game. Garen gets an AD buff. This is nice to see as reroll Garen has been completely absent from the meta the last couple of patches. Graves gets a nerf and a buff. Now he needs one more auto to cast his first spell, but every cast after that one comes quicker. This shouldn't have that much of an impact besides him becoming stronger in the reroll Kogma comp and a little bit weaker when you're just using him as a regular 2-star unit. Elawi gets a buff at all levels, this is fine as Brewster openers don't feel amazing, and now she might even be worth 3-starring in some comps with all that healing. Kassadin gets a small nerf, now his spell makes him less tanky, but it lasts longer. He should still be the primary tank in reroll Kog'Maw even after this nerf. Twisted Fate gets buffed at all levels, this should help the early game of both Syndicate Shaco and Arcanus Lux. Nice to see as those comps have weak early games. Moving on to 2 costs, Swain gets a decent buff at all levels and a nice mana buff as well. This should make him worth 3 starring in reroll Imperials, and maybe this is enough to make the Swain Drain comp return into the meta. Kogma gets a buff and a nerf, this makes the cap of reroll Kogma worse, but you will become stronger in the early game. Talon gets a buff, this should make him better late game as he will apply more bleed. Talon was already the best unit in the game on stage 2, and this will make him even stronger now. So if you need to save HP, picking up Talon is huge, as now he will kill even more units in the early game. Zillion gets a small buff to his spell, now it will slow for a little longer, which is nice. Moving on to 3 costs, Heimerdinger gets a giant buff. Now he has one more range, and therefore he will not walk up all the time like a complete idiot. This is a giant buff to Yordles, and it's a nice buff to Scholar reroll, as well as Innovators. Malzahar gets nerfed at 1 star, but buffed at 3 star. This should make reroll mutants feel better, but ultimately it shouldn't change too much. Echo gets buffed at all levels. Since it's only the damage from his spell, it shouldn't affect him too much, as the main damage from Echo comes from the additional attack speed he gives to his team. Lysandra gets a small buff at all levels. This makes her more of an attractive carry, and since Hymer also got buffed, we might see Scholar reroll return to the meta. Samira gets an HP buff. This shouldn't change too much besides making her better with healing items as you get more value from them. Vex gets a small HP nerf which is great for both the Yordles and Arcanists. Moving on to 4 costs, Seraphine gets a buff at all levels. This is nice to see as she was pretty much just a trait bot for Socialite, and since that trait got nerfed, it's great to see her get some power back. This is a great buff to both Innovators and Enchanter Orianna. Urgot gets a big nerf, 
but it's in a weird way. Now Hurricane, Static Ship, and Rage Blade are a lot weaker on Urgot, but all other items work just as well. This might change his itemization, but we will have to see on that one. Orianna gets a small mana buff. This is mostly to compensate for the two socialite nerf, so it should be about power neutral in the Enchanter Orianna comp, but outside of that she is a more powerful utility unit now. Scion gets a buff at 1 star, this is fine as it makes him a better tank in the Imperial comp. Yone gets an HP nerf, this makes him more squishy, which is nice as sometimes he felt unkillable if he got enough procs with Challenger. Moving on to 5 cards, Galio gets nerfed and buffed. Now he deals less damage, but he will stun for a little longer at 1 star. This shouldn't change anything besides Galio 1 star feeling a little better. Kaisa gets a big nerf, now she is mostly squishy, taking longer to cast and deals less damage. Overall nice to see as she dominated the last patch. Tom Kench gets nerfed overall. Now he will be less tanky in general, which is nice to see as 2 star Kench felt unkillable at times. His 3 star version is also getting a gigantic buff. Now he will get insane amounts of stats once he is 3 starred. Victor gets a small mana buff. This is mostly to compensate for the 2 socialite nerf so it shouldn't change anything. Moving on to items. GA gets a nerf. Now it will give almost no HP once the unit is revived with it. This means that the unit will be 1 or 2 shot once they heal back, which makes any GA user heavily reliant on a healing item to actually get value from it. Morello gets nerfed, now it deals less damage. This won't change anything besides indirectly buffing Bruisers and Colossus. Morello is still a fantastic anti-heal item that will still be useful in most games next patch. RFC gets an attack speed buff. This is nice to see as I have not built this item in a long time, so maybe it becomes more viable on melee carries now. Sunfire becomes power neutral, it will deal less damage, but it will apply the burn more often. Basically it becomes more utility and less damage. ZZ Rock gets a buff. Now it won't fall off as hard. This is nice to see as I haven't seen anyone build this item unless they're playing Darkstar Mutants, but I don't see myself building this item next patch as both Bow and Belt are very high value item components right now. Chalice gets a small buff. This is great for AP comps with multiple carries like Arcanus and Yordles. Static Shiv gives less attack speed, so I don't like this change. Although it was a very strong item last patch, the best users were Orga and Kai'Sa and they both got nerfed, so I don't see this item getting built that much next patch. Moving on to Augments. Stand United gets nerfed at tier 1 and 2. This makes it less of something you pick up every game, but it is still a fantastic augment in horizontal comps such as Sniper Jin. Makeshift Armor gets buffed at all levels. This augment felt pretty good before, and now it should still be great, especially in Bruiser and Chemtech comps. Ardent Sensor gets a nice buff. This is a big buff to both Enchanter Orianna and Sniper Jin if they get the augment offered. Ascension gets a nerf, this augment always felt like an instagrab, so it's nice to see it getting nerfed. Duet gets a small nerf, if you're committed to playing Socialite, it will still be a great one to pick up though. Spellblade gets another buff, this augment is a little strange as you have to build your team around this augment. It still won't be great in traditional Arcanist comps though. Sunfire Board deals less damage. This change feels bad as the augment was not that great as it only lasted for 8 seconds. Woodland Charm gets a buff. This change is close to nothing. It should still be a great augment to pick up on 1-4 as you get another 2 star unit for free. Shrug it off gets a small buff. It shouldn't change anything as it only benefits comps that are running 6 or more bruisers or have 3 star their bruisers on the board. Portable Forge gets a tiny buff as Death's Defiance now has Omnivamp. There are also some bug fixes, nothing important besides Fiora and Caitlyn now won't get their ults cancelled as often anymore, which is nice to see. Now in order to understand how this will change the meta, we need to look at what the meta did look like at the end of 1124. As we can see, Socialite Kai'Sa and Chemtech Ergot dominated the meta, with insanely high pick rates and still a fantastic average placement. Jin followed closely behind and the rest of the comps were decent enough to get top forward if you got a great opener for them. This meta resulted in a lot of people playing very greedy as both Kai'Sa and Jin required you to have a lot of gold at level 8 before you roll. And since everybody was greeting, Chemtech Urgot players were able to fast 8 to find Jinx and Tom Kench resulting in the comp getting a high cap. Since the meta was very slow paced, a lot of people were not able to take that much damage on stage 3 and 4. The meta was also dominated by comps that all got nerfed, and so it will always be a bit of a free-for-all in terms of who becomes the next S-tier comp. 
But since both Samir reroll, Arcanus reroll, Six Yordles, and Scholar reroll all got buffed, in addition to Cogma reroll barely getting nerfed, we might see reroll 2 and 3 cost meta again, similar to the Katarina meta we had 2 or 3 patches ago. If this doesn't play out, then we will most likely see Jin and other 4 cost carries continue to be the goal, which should give us a more aggressive meta, as more people will roll at level 6 and 7 during stage 3 and 4. Now moving on to my tier list, we have Sniper Jin as the only S tier comp. It did not get nerfed at all, and Orianna even got a small buff. The issue with this comp is that you need to be level 8 before you roll, as you need a lot of 2 star forecasts. For the rest of the comps, it is a little hard to place them, as it depends a ton on how good reroll comps will be. I think that Chemtech Urgot, Arcanus Lux, and Innovators should be good comps to play if the meta revolves around Jin. Syndicate Shaco is good into Jin, and also great into Lux and Cogma reroll as well. The buff to 6 Yordles and Heimerdinger is huge. This should make 6 Yordle a lot more playable, as he will hit the 3-star faster while also getting more consistent fights with the Heimerdinger buff. Kogma reroll didn't get nerfed hard enough to get put into B tier, and since Garen and Kogma 1-star got buffed, it will be easier to save HP in the early game, resulting in you losing less HP on the way to the 3-stars. In B tier, we have a ton of comps that were playable last patch if you had a great opener for them, and with this patch, I don't see them going up in value. Like I said, a lot of the reroll comps might go up a tier if the meta ends up very 2 cost and 3 cost reroll heavy. With the Yone nerfs and GA nerfs, Challenger Yone goes down to B tier, and Kai'Sa got nerfed down to B tier since the meta will speed up a little as well. Scholar reroll might be great since Lissandra and Heimerdinger got nice buffs, but with the Chemtech nerfs, it might not be good enough for A tier. Tristana reroll will be a lot weaker since you will get Ziggs more often from the portal, resulting in it taking longer to get Tristana 3 star. In addition, 6 Yordles got buffed enough for it to make it harder for people to play reroll Tristana and also hit at the same time. Twitch reroll gets hit a little too hard with a Chemtech nerf to stay in B tier as well. This tier list is just my prediction and I feel less confident in this one as a large part of the meta will depend a lot on how strong reroll comps end up being. So take this tier list with a grain of salt and good luck tomorrow when the patch drops. Thank you so much for watching, if you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, comment down below what video you want me to make next, and if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord, we got over 6,000 other players there who are hungry to climb, and if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care, and see you in the next video.